Hey there, Emmanuel here from WebDevFuel and in today's video you're going to learn exactly how to build a multi-tenant application inside of Phoenix using Triplex. Now, if you're not aware, Trip Triplex is basically a package that is going to allow us to not only create uh, tenants but also manage them and then delete them and also using Triplex we're then going to be able basically to use PostgreSQL uh, schema prefixes in order to separate our data using uh, again PostgreSQL schemas and with that in mind let's go ahead and go over exactly what the application that we're going to be using in order to build this is and it is basically a to-do application it is very simple I'm uh, I've built this using Phoenix Live View if you're interested in knowing how to build this step by step let me know in the comments I can make a video in the future uh, about how to build a to-do application using Phoenix Live View but with that in mind we can simply add here for example wash the dishes and then after we add here wash the dishes it reflects here let's say that we also want to walk the dog we can walk the dog if walk the dog is uh, actually walk the cat we can go ahead and update the item and it updates right over here and we can also go ahead and delete to those items now here's exactly how this application is um, basically what's making this application work and it essentially has here on the router a get uh, uh, path that goes to the page controller then it renders the index.html template and then the template passes here the live render of page live view which is the module that is rendering uh, the entire uh, to-do application and then we have here a bunch of stuff again if you're interested in knowing how to do this let me know in the comments below but basically all of this then goes and calls um, here the to-do's context in order to manipulate uh, basically the items and then insert them delete them um, and update the items now with this in mind what we want to do is basically the following we want to add in here to the page controller a way for us to fetch our subdomain so we know what tenant it is if the subdomain doesn't exist uh, or actually if the tenant doesn't exist we want to basically halt the connection so it gives back an error then we pass in here the tenant and then we'll pass the tenant um, here to the socket and then we'll use the tenant from the socket to start making requests to all of these to-dos which basically then means that if we come in here and we navigate for example to tenant uh, that localhost uh, we'll see um, a list of items and if we navigate to tenant one for example we'll see a different type uh, a different list of items so with this in mind let's start by first of all adding which is the first step we need to add in here to the configuration our uh, triplex package and in order to do that simply copy here from the uh, documentation or you can watch on the screen what i'm pasting and we essentially need to paste this in here and then go to your terminal uh, i'm going to go ahead and pause the server and now i'm going to do here a mix depths.get which is going to get me all the dependencies uh, including all the dependencies for triplex now with this in mind we need to go ahead and next go to our configuration file and start setting up everything that we need in order to essentially uh, set up triplex with um with phoenix so let's go ahead and do exactly that so we can for example add in here on this line you need to add config and then you need to write here triplex and then we need to define the repo and in this case the repo uh, is going to be here our uh, module uh, application module name and then that repo so just like here on actor repos as you can see so let's go ahead and write exactly that and this is everything that we need in order to set up uh, Phoenix uh, triplex on Phoenix uh, on a Phoenix application all right so let's continue now the next step is for us to navigate to our uh, migrations folder and before doing that I'm actually going to do an act or rollback meaning that I'm going to delete all of uh, um, all of my items from the database that I've just created in order to make room for uh, 
basically to clean up and now we can make room to create our tenant migrations now you simply need to change in here the migrations folder from um, migrations to tenant migrations and then triplex is going to be using this folder in order to essentially migrate each schema each time that we create a new uh, tenant now with this in mind and with this done we can now go ahead and navigate to our page controller and in here we essentially want to basically get the subdomain from our connection now in order to do that let's start by first of all creating a private uh, function that we're going to be calling sub domain we're going to pass in here the host that we're going to grab from the connection and then using the host let's pipe this into a string that split this essentially is going to split uh, the host on the dot meaning that if you write tenant dot uh, local host this is going to split it into three things into tenant dot and a local host uh, actually only a tenant and a local host now with that we can go ahead and actually use here uh, grab from the list meaning that this string is going to split it into a list and we want to simply grab the first item from the list and this will essentially give us back in here uh, if we write again here tenant.localhost this is going to grab us only the tenant string now with this done we can go ahead now and write the logic that we need in order to make sure that we halt this connection if the tenant uh, doesn't exist and if it exists we can simply continue and assign it to the connection so that we can uh, next pass it in here uh, to the live render now with this in mind let's go ahead and write here host which is con.host and then we're going to grab here the subdomain using our function get subdomain and we'll simply pass in here the host now with this done we can go ahead and use here from the triplex module a function that they give us which essentially means triplex exists and this basi basically is going to be checking if the triplex uh, based on a name exists and if it doesn't exist uh, it will give back uh, essentially if it exists it is going to give back true if it doesn't it is going to be give back false now if it does exist we want to simply pass in the connection assign uh, to the tenant uh, key the value of subdomain and we also want to render in here our template which is here the the index.html which is essentially what's happening down here we can actually go ahead and also delete that and if it is false basically if the um, the tenant does not exist we can go ahead and simply halt our connection and with this done this is everything that we need uh, in order to make this work inside our page controller now let's go ahead and add here to our session essentially we're going to pass in uh, the value that's uh, that we're then going to grab here from the session and then in here we simply want to add in here tenant so the tenant key is going to be of value tenant that we're going to be grabbing here um, from this assignment so we've assigned here and now we have access uh, to it here on our template now with this in mind now we are almost ready and i know it might sound crazy it is this easy to make a triplex uh, a multi-tenant application work inside of phoenix now the next thing that we want to be doing is the following we want to come in here and essentially grab here uh, from the session our tenant value and we want to do two different things first of all we want to go ahead and add it here to our socket meaning that we can then have access uh, to it here on our handle event functions and we also want uh, to essentially now after we pass it in here we want to go ahead and start changing um, in here inside this to do file we want to start changing all of these functions that we're going to be using here um, on the page live module in order to then be able to pass as the first parameter on each one of these functions the tenant name 
So let's go ahead and do exactly that. Now let's start first of all with the list items. That is a function that is going to list all the items. And then after we pass in here the tenant, let's just go ahead and save so you can see exactly what's happening. It is now complaining that we are not using, but we want to use it the following way. Let's write here prefix and the prefix is going to be triplex. So again, access the triplex module. And then we want to use here the function to prefix. And then we simply pass in here the tenant. Now, this is uh, what we're going to do with all of the rest of these functions. So let's go ahead and do that. Again, we can do this in here with the insert. It's exactly the same thing triplex dot to prefix and then we pass in here the tenant we also want to do it here with the update so once we update we can actually update inside the correct tenant so the prefix is going to be triplex to prefix and then we pass in here the tenant and finally here on the delete we also want to pass in here our tenant and then we're going to delete with the prefix of triplex dot to prefix and then we're going to pass in here the tenant now this is everything that we need in order to make it work in here i'm not going to be changing here the change item or the get item by id uh, function since i'm not using them in here but as you can see it is now complaining on all of these functions that we don't have a tenant and that's great. It means that we can now go ahead and actually add the tenant in here, uh, the tenant name in order to make all of this work. So let's go ahead and add in here uh, the tenant. Let's also go ahead and add it here. Now, in order to add it here, we actually need to grab it from the socket. So we're going to do here socket assigns tenant. And then we can pass it in here. Now we can go ahead and paste it in here. Then uh, we can also pass it here. And we, I think we're done. Yeah, exactly. We are done. Now we've passed it here to the update, to the delete item, and also to the, uh, I think we might be missing one. Not really sure why this is not complaining. But let's go ahead and still pass this in here, tenant, and we're going to pass in as the second value. So just to make sure, let's go ahead and search for all the to do's that inside the module and make sure that all of them have the tenant. Yeah, all of them have the tenant. So we can now go ahead and continue doing everything that we need in order to make sure that this is working. Now we only have to do one last thing and that is trying our application to make sure that all of this is working. Now here's exactly what we need to do in order to make this happen. I'm going to start uh, here the, um, the Phoenix server using interactive mode, meaning that we can actually start typing things and manipulating our application using the terminal. And that's great for us to uh, create essentially, uh, let me just see here what happened. No function clause matching in mount. All right, let's see exactly here what is wrong with this. The session is tenant so we're passing in here the tenant Oh yeah, essentially we've passed uh, the repo incorrectly. So let's just go ahead and go back here to our configuration. And we've basically passed in here the incorrect repo, meaning that we can now actually go ahead, 
uh, close the application and I think that if all of this goes well the application now shouldn't give an error so yeah exactly as you can see we've now refreshed the page and it is giving a 500 code error and that's because the tenant doesn't yet exist there is no tenant available if we go ahead and we do here tenant.localhost uh, port 4000 the same thing is going to happen but if we navigate actually back to our application and we go ahead and uh, we add here triplex.create and then we go ahead and write in here tenant as you can see it is, has just created our schema and it has also gone ahead and migrated the schema tables so with that in mind we can now go ahead refresh and as you can see we now have access to the application from the tenant.localhost now if we for now navigate to tenant1 we're going to get back an error and that's because again in here on the page controller if it exists uh, we essentially give it back a um, the connection if it doesn't exist we're going to halt the connection and that's exactly what's happening right here now with this in mind if we go ahead and navigate back to the tenant let's just make a little test so you can make so we can make sure that this is actually separating the data between the tenants now let's go ahead and also create here a tenant one and as you can see the exact same thing happened as with tenant uh, as with the tenant which is a tenant name now let's go ahead and for example imagine that the tenant number one that you have your your customer let's say number one that's using your application wants to go ahead and add here walk the dog and wash the dishes now if we navigate here to the tenant one as you can see there's no uh, basically there's no data from the tenant in here only from the tenant uh, one and now let's go ahead and for example say in here pay the bills and just like before we can now navigate back to our tenant and if we refresh this as you can see wash the dishes and walk the dog and the tenant one has here only pay the bills and that's essentially happening if you go ahead here and refresh um, our database as you can see it basically means that we have here two different schemas uh, using PostgreSQL so we're basically separating the data using schemas we could go ahead and do that using docker uh, another another method but this one is pretty simple and very effective in separating data uh, so essentially as you can see if you go ahead here on the tenant walk the dog and uh, wash the dishes and if we go ahead and add in here um, the items from the tenant one we can see here pay the bills uh, which is the items from the tenant number one as you can see it is pretty easy to build uh, multi-tenancy into your Phoenix application using triplex and compared to other frameworks let's say that you're using Django or Node.js I believe that this method is pretty pretty simple and it makes creating multi-tenant applications either if you're for example just building a personal project or if you're thinking of building a SaaS application in the future this makes it very easy for you to build multi-tenancy into your application and allow each customer to have each, uh, its own data and access its own data you could uh, then in the future go ahead and also plug this into a user management system and make sure that only the right users are actually able to access the tenants and, and each user could for example have access to mo uh, multiple tenants uh, those are basically basically just ideas and things that you could then work with from this point but this is the basis for essentially building multi-tenancy into your Phoenix application and it is very simple and yet very effective uh, if you want again to separate data inside your Phoenix application. Now with this in mind if you enjoyed this video 
uh, leave a like below, let me know in the comments exactly what you liked about it and also if you want to see more things around Phoenix and around how to build Phoenix application, uh, applications, subscribe to, to get notified of future content.